Okay, so this is something that's hit the web for quite some time. So people shot me some some messages about it. The the Joe Rogan ripping on uh, on wrestling fans. See if I can pull up the the quote. Oh, uh, where's where's that really really great quote that everyone's got on the, their sites? All right, here we go. <clears throat> The person he was talking to mentioned that there's probably some sort of crossover between the fans of UFC and the WWE. He said, like, probably like 70% of people who watch UFC now at one point in time are probably WWE fans. So, <clears throat> Joe Rogan, in a relatively joking terminology, here, here's what he was comparing to. One is real, one of them is people, one of them is people battling for their lives, the most difficult contest in all sports. The other one is some weird, of course here it's seven stars, so throw in the word, that's seven letters, jerk off thing where strange guys sit in front of the TV and pretend they don't know it's fake. You don't want to know, you just shut that part of your brain off. Here ends up being the weird thing, that's like 12 minutes into a 33 minute long section little show that he was doing, where he mentioned stuff like, you know, Bob Backlund, he dropped Jimmy Superfly, snook his name. <clears throat> he was talking to a guy, uh, Tony Hedgecliffe, and the guy was talking about how he almost had a job for the E. I was like, all right, you know. And then talking about how there's pretty much no correlation between UFC fans and WWE fans, unless, of course, you go all the way back to the first versions of UFC and then look at it now. You do people coming to the ring with ring music, you do people who are cutting, well, essentially when they do press conferences, it's more of a promo to try to drum up interest inside the fight. So there are bits and pieces of what professional wrestling does more of that kind of transition into the UFC. Iraq, when you watch the majority of it, he's joking. You know, he did bring up, you know, Brock Lesnar doing the shooting star and almost killing himself. So, that leads me to believe that Joe Rogan probably knows a little bit about professional, a very, very small amount of it. He's still, of course, under the impression that people who watch it don't know that it's fake. If you didn't know that it was fake, I'm sorry. Lots of things are, are fake. Game of Thrones isn't actually happening right now. If I were to travel to Springfield, I'm not going to be like, how come no one here is yellow with, like, four fingers? Why has everyone got five fingers and they're all of different skin complexions? Where's the quickie mark? Where's 742 Evergreen Terrace? Now, I'm well aware of the fact that The Sopranos was not a documentary. <coughs> Any reality shows you've watched on TV, except for like the first couple seasons of The Real World, which were really dull. They probably have a story editor. That's someone who's looking at everything that's going on and is putting together a narrative. Whenever they have somebody talking with a static background behind them, they're being fed questions from a producer. The only thing that you see on TV that is probably remotely actually happening is a sporting event. An actual sport. When you watch the Olympics, that's actually going on. There's no one really faking it. When you're watching curling, dang it, they're curling. When you're watching boxing, they're boxing. When you're watching any sport, that's about as realistic as anything's ever going to get on TV. That's why wrestling is called sports entertainment. You know, there, there, there really isn't a, a win-loss system. They don't have this long, massive bracket where it's like, well, on this season, you know, Dolph Ziggler, you've, you've been in eight matches and you lost four. So that makes you this location in the seating bracket. No. No, it is. That's what I'm saying. It's a male soap opera where you have people who are doing very physically demanding stunts inside the ring in front of people. It's essentially like watching a live stunt show. You know, what, what makes it entertaining is you have people out there who are putting their lives on the line. It is where it's one's the most physically difficult sport to try to do in the world of UFC. But you've had less severe injuries in the UFC than you have in the world of professional wrestling. You've had broken necks, you've had severe concussions, you've had broken legs. You've had a lot of really grotesque injuries in the world of professional wrestling. 
that have happened live from a million people. You've had people die on the way to the ring. I mean, there's I probably say I probably say the world freshman is probably more physically demanding. The pay structure actually pretty much the same. If you're someone who is trying to make it on the indie circuit in either one of those professions, you're pretty much broke. So you have the people who are very broke. You have the people who are working some of the, the major events, but they're not the big name stars. It's not making some decent money. Then your big name stars are pulling into millions and millions of dollars. The idea that there's no crossover fans. Um, Tito Ortiz went to TNA. Ken Shamrock went from UFC to WWF at the time. Try to do some more UFC, went to TNA, try to do some more UFC. Dan Severn, same sort of scenario. Brock Lesnar went from the E to try to do football. Did a really good job in UFC for a short stint, came back to the WWE. Bobby Lashley, WWE. Didn't have a lot of really big success in mixed martial arts, now on TNA. Dave Batista. Went from the world of professional wrestling, tried his hand at mixed martial arts, was a little on the older side, didn't do very well. CM Punk had mentioned if UFC had been bigger, he probably would have went to that instead of professional wrestling. So I'm pretty sure there's a decent amount of crossover between professional wrestling fans and UFC fans. Yeah, if there's a big fight for UFC, I'm interested. I'll watch it. Do I watch it a lot? No. Because I'm well aware that when you watch a UFC pay-per-view, you can either have some great fights, or you can have lots of people who are pretty much going beyond the ground. While very technical, it's not super entertaining to watch. Unless you're a big fan of, you know, watching two people in a really close clinch, doing the very slight minutiae trying to defeat their opponent. You know, professional wrestling is entertaining because it is normally relatively fast paced. They're in the process of telling a story in the ring. That's why professional wrestling is a blend of biology, psychology, physical aspect of it, you know, psychological aspect of it. Some people just look at it and go, you're a bunch of idiots watching this stuff. You know that it's fake. I'm well aware that it's fake. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here before you right now with four different college degrees. I have patents to my name. So I'm absolutely not someone you would consider an idiot. But it's something that I enjoy watching. For some people, it's a guilty pleasure. With the E! Network, I watch a lot more of it right now. Even some of the documentaries. Really great documentaries. You know, about people who have spent years upon years of their lives doing this stuff. People have to go through, okay, okay, I need to do a match with these guys. This might just be a one-off match, or this could actually be something that's going to transition its way through the potential of maybe a year maybe six months. While well, having this overarching idea, if the crowd likes it, go with it. If it doesn't like it, adjust, try to go back and try to make it work. So a tremendous amount of intelligence has to go into creating the world of professional wrestling. Are there dumb things? Yeah, there's dumb things. Sometimes there are way too many dumb things. Yes. Those things you really can't, if you really can't truly defend some of those things. You know, Chavo Guerrero riding on a stick horse. Perry Saturn talking to a mop. Al Snow talking to a head. Mannequin head. People going nuts when a man reaches into his pants and pulls out either a cobra, which is a sock puppet, or a sock. Oh, if they come around with a little bull, we know it's a dwarf in a suit. Or look, it's a dwarf with a bull and he's in a cow suit. Sometimes there are things that are thrown in there that are more for the, the children to watch more than anything else. UFC is definitely geared a lot more towards adults, where WWE currently really isn't. It is much more family-friendly programming, where when you see a UFC event, it is definitely geared more towards an older audience. They're both prime for the exact same group, that 18 to, 18 to 35 age range, so there is overlap. One is currently the cool thing, one is currently the less cool thing.